Howdy gamers, Drewski here. In today's episode, I'm excited to show you my entire gaming setup, where I fly digital fighter jets, take part in simulated revolutions, and bonk heads cross map. To play normal games is one thing, but to fly a simulated one-to-one -to -one Tomcat alongside 60 other players in a 300 square mile map smoothly is another. Realistic tactical shooters and large-scale simulators are the true tests of your PC and your equipment, requiring higher-end PC components, peripherals, and configurations. Whatever you're bringing into the battle does make a difference, so today I'm sharing what I've found to be the best for me in my PC build and my audio equipment, favorite BB shooters all the way to canvas art. This is how I game. Firstly, let's talk about the heart of the setup, the PC. This is a custom build recently sent from our new channel partner, Meta PCs. Meanwhile, Facebook last week changed its name to Meta. It was surprising news to everybody, particularly for a computer company in Arizona that's called Meta PC. To reflect who we are and what we hope to build, I'm proud to announce that we are now Facebook. <laughs> There's some cool dudes that I've known since about 2018, and when I heard that they made a custom PC company, I reached out to them, and after a few DMs and feet pics back and forth, you know, they sent me this PC to review. I don't know how this keeps working, but I keep acquiring these free items with no charge. I didn't even have to threaten them with violence. Well, not too much. They shipped the graphics card separately. The GPU isn't in this box. For the safety of the GPU, they sent the, the GPU separately. This might be the graphics card. What the heck? Why would NVIDIA do this? It's like I'm birthing this PC right now. Cool. Um, wait. Oh my gosh. The GPU is so big, you mount it to the side, like to a, a bottom rack. I've never seen this before. Look at that. The GPU goes in that slot. I, I don't even know if you can see it. Look at that. Why? Why is that so lorg? As I pondered the morals and religious concerns of mounting a GPU sideways, I wondered what I was getting myself into. Art. That's what it was. A box filled with so many fans and the slickest camo to date. My logo. My brand. What a girl. Wonder how fast this could play Arma 3. Like maybe, what do you think? 15 FPS? Maybe, maybe even 18? Something, something along those lines. Look, I heard the co-founder Kyle say the word Bungus while playing 2042. I've taught him how to reload mags in our past Anastasia episodes and shot some rifles with him too. So I think that you should use the link in the description to check out their PCs. Transparency a moment, I get a little bit of commission if you do buy a PC. They sent this to me for free. I plan to have them be the new channel PC sponsor as long as they'll have us. So if you do need a PC, they offer a bunch of pre-builds that can ship next business day and custom rigs that you can configure yourself for whatever you want. Check them out in the link right at the top of the description down below. Holding all the parts together is the Lee and Lee PC-011 case in black with huge glass windows allowing you and your friends on Instagram to see just how much money you spent on what's inside. The motherboard is the Asus Tough Z790 with the lightning fast 24 core oh, Intel i9 13900K. This thing is nuts. What is that? Dude, Intel just looked at the last CPU generation they had and just told it to go faster. <laughs> and, <laughs> and now it's like the most inefficient hottest running but fastest CPU you can get right now. Combine that with a 4090 that has 24 gigabytes of VRAM plus the RAM in the computer itself is 64 gigs of 6,000 mega transfer RAM. It's just dumb. Throwing out all these numbers, I just feel like I'm a person at the party that just is in the corner going, they don't even know that I have the Asus ROG Strix OC RTX. Uh, the 4090 is two pounds off from being as heavy as my entire Xbox 360. This chunk of metal is stupidly large, but there's a reason for it. Battlefield 1, the fans in the PC are quiet. The game is running at 5K resolution. The graphics are set to ultra. The GPU is running 98% usage and the temperature is sitting at 60 Celsius. They made this heatsink so large that it can spread the heat of all that bleeding edge tech, basically requiring less work from the fans and overall lower temps, likely leading to a longer component lifespan. Yes, it's effectively larger and heavier than the rest of the entire motherboard CPU and RAM, 
but I'd actually prefer larger GPU heatsinks over the smaller ones that require loud fans to stay cool, especially for long live streams of games. Keeping a PC cool over time is important. The 4090 is just an insane card. It outright destroys any game at 1440p. 1080p is just a joke to it. 4K is like a light jog, and it's even capable of 8K in some games, which is just it's silly. So let's go. 1.5. And no FSR. I'm playing squad at 4K at 127 FPS. <laughs> the i9-13900K processor is a single core machine. This configuration is likely in the top of the fastest PCs for playing Arma 3 right now as Arma greatly relies on Core Zero and nothing else. It's physical pain to be an intense mission in Vietnam and your CPU is only at 14% usage. Oh, Arma, you're, you're just so old. You're so old. Theoretically, you could have an alien spaceship's quantum processor run Arma 3 and it'd probably be within 15 FPS of this. 2042, on the other hand, being a more multi-core optimized game, being also the CPU heaviest of the AAA shooter genre, runs like a dream on this PC with 200 plus FPS at 1440p old almost at all times. DCS is the true tester though. It's a massive game with simulated fighter jets duking it out over huge landscapes, but just recently DCS released multi-threading. In smooth brain terms, that means more optimization for newer, higher core count CPUs. Boom, I am locked at 180 FPS. I can't even unlock it. I tried to changing that config and the vSync settings. I don't know, this bad boy does not quit. I rarely dip below 170, but in a game like DCS, all I need is smooth 60. And now, no matter how laggy the server I'm playing on gets, this thing eats it up like breakfast. The multi-threading update came out right as I received this PC too, so I about doubled frames with just these two changes. What? Okay, so this is obviously the most powerful PC I've ever seen in person by far. The combination of the CPU, the DDR5 memory, the Xbox 360 weight graphics card, this thing is beefy. According to PC Part Picker, you could build this PC for $4,560 yourself or buy it pre-built from Meta for $49.68. Look, I'm a PC builder myself, so I like giving you that visual option there, but 9% for a one-year warranty slapped on top of the PC is not too bad in my opinion. Also, if I was not a YouTuber streamer all that, I'd probably go for the much more priced performance i5-13600K with something like the RTX 4070 Ti. And if you're shorter on cash, they also have builds, pre-builds as well, starting out at $1,200 on their site. So what about the rest of the setup? Monitors, keyboards, doohickeys, and broken stuff that still I've made functional. First off, perception is key. Being able to see and hear is the only way to detect bad guys in games, so I focus hard on boosting those abilities in both sections. Samsung G7, 1440p is a minimum for games like Squad or Arma when seeing details of bad guys 700 meters away and stretching that screen size to 32 inches helps a lot. The pixel density of 1440p at 32 inches is the same as 1080p on a 24 inch monitor, which I think is a good sweet spot. This monitor also goes up to 240 hertz, and although I think that's easily past placebo frame rate, I can still appreciate that extreme butter smooth feeling of a mouse when editing videos, landing headshots in Battlefield 1, or turning in a fighter jet. My second monitor is my old 25 inch HP monitor from I think my dad's PC he bought a long time ago or something. It's one of the monitors ever made. So my broken audio technicas that are band-aided with Velcro straps are some of the best sound makers you can get for the money. A lot of people go for gaming headsets when starting out, don't. They're usually really muddy with overly done bass and are commonly overpriced. These carry a lot more detail in the treble range than most headsets have an overall airy and crunchy balance on them by default. And my friends can vouch that I'm usually the first one to hear footsteps in games like Escape from Tarkov. I think these are easily one of the best suggestions I have for anyone. If you do have a small brain size though, I could recommend uh, getting a little Velcro strap and connecting these two pads at the top together. Also, don't torture them like I have for the past six years. My mouse is a glorious Model O. It's way too small for my giant but skinny hands, uh, but I bought it and I got used to it. As of writing this 
scripts that the right mouse button just broke after two years of use and I'm getting a new wired Razer Death Adder V3 coming in tomorrow. Corsair K70 keyboard with replacement keycaps because the original ones were super loose and flew off all the time. I still love my Shure SM7B. This is a great microphone for hiding key presses and background noise while keeping my voice sounding as close to real life as possible. It's the mic you've heard me through for years now, and it will likely never be replaced. A more budget-friendly option is the Audio-Technica ET2020 USB. My buddies AV, Clutch, and Jamie all use that mic, so if you ever heard them talk in videos, you're listening through it. My audio interface is a Go XLR Mini. I actually don't like this thing. It has very poor protection against interference, so if your router is in the same room, you'll hear popping and hissing from time to time, but it's also the simplest way I run audio to my stream PC, and the software is pretty simple to use. If you don't plan on running a stream PC, I prefer my Steinberg UR22, my much more than this. For flight sims, I still snap on my verbal hotas setup with the mongoose grip, throttle, and rudders. I have a full flight sim setup video from when I first got these on the channel. I've put them to the absolute test on probably 500 hours of flying, and they've held up pretty good. I did break one little plastic thing for my trigger guard, it was my fault, but also the stage one on my trigger broke within the first maybe 100 hours of using this setup, and that wasn't my fault. So I have to press a pinky button every time I want to enable my A10 gun stabilization now. Sad Pepe. On my walls around the PC, you might notice a certain type of wall art I've got. These are canvas prints from an artist named Jacob Rosalski. You might know him if you play an RTS game called Iron Harvest, which was based off of his art. He commonly stitches together pieces from real photo references and transforms them into this alt-universe, early 1900s Polish vibe. I don't think of myself as an artsy person, but I appreciate nature and military history, and the spectrum of tones from his art, uh, from the happy notes of a bear and a dog saying hello, to marching soldiers on masked horses sanitizing the landscape of any life, is just thrilling to me. I appreciate dark themes of books, movies, music, and imagery, and almost have an instinctive addiction to horror itself. Mechs peacefully patrolling through a forest, or peasants witnessing unimaginable technology. I find myself looking at these more than I ever thought I would when I bought them, and I plan to buy some more. If you like the style of these, check out Simon Stallenhag as well. I plan to add some prints of his as well soon. I have a few shelves in here too. They're filled with random stuff like some of my favorite night vision goggles from the classy e PVS7, the reliable PVS14, and the RNVG Daily Driver, a 3D printed ODST helmet for Airsoft, a Novich SSG rifle, an ENL AK, my 100K and 1 million plaques, my old X-52 that I haven't touched in three years, love you BB, and my 556 Overflow began here at the bottom of this shelf for some reason, in case the bloodsuckers in Pripyat jump out of the monitor at me. The pink blanket off to the left of the PC, by the way, is because our cat just chose that blanket one day and now that's his blanket, so I, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of the pink, you know, cheetah pattern, but it, it's his blanket, I can't, I can't take it from him now. I have a little tech shelf here up to the left. It's literally a tech shelf. It has a character from Star Wars named Tech on the top of it. My wife, Chelsea, has the easiest Christmas job ever because I never really could give her a good answer on what things I wanted for Christmas. Now she just buys me these cool figures of my favorite characters from the Clone Wars. Call me a kid, but I never had these much when I was growing up, so I still think they're cool. The tech shelf also includes my stream PC. My buddy Demon Mitt built me this thing. Basically, it's nice to have a second PC dedicated to streaming, as it makes streaming have zero performance difference for your gaming rig, meaning more frames on that gaming rig. I spent as long as I could with a single PC setup until I just needed to upgrade, because holy crap, managing a two PC setup is kind of a pain in the ass. I could explain exactly how I set all the sound and visuals to transfer from this one to that one, but you'd probably have graduated high school by the end of it. And the last item I'm using to film all this is my Sony a7S II with a big old Tamron lens that goes from normal to super zoomy. Nice lens, makes me look cool. All in all, I built this setup with simplicity and convenience as the top priority. I didn't want a sim pit that would hinder regular gaming, I didn't want six monitors, I didn't want an overly complex water-cooled PC that would be a hard fix if something went wrong. I prefer simplicity, ease of use, because at the end of the day, I'm here to game, I'm here to create. In 2014, little Drewski would have bungled in his sneezers if he knew I had a setup like this, because that kid was writing multiple pages of his English notebook worth of PC part price fluctuations, graphics card specs, and optimization strategies to pour every frame out of each dollar he spent to buy that $440 PC. Because my friends had been given PCs from their parents, or had a PC in the house that a bigger brother owned that they could play their games on already, but I didn't. I launched AZ for the first time and was running at 15 FPS. 
I think that goes to show just how much enjoyment I had for games like these and how much I still have for games like these because I used to play these games down to 7 or 8 FPS until I deemed them as unplayable and not an enjoyable experience anymore. My experience with games today is quite the contrast. Thank you. 